Summer is almost over, it's finally less than 95 degrees outside, and I can at long last finish part two of this addressable RGB fan roundup. Let's put this thing on ice. Or water. You know what I mean. Welcome back to Craft Computing, everyone. As always, I'm Jeff. Around six weeks ago, I sought out to answer the question that had been on my mind recently. With all the RGB and now addressable RGB fans coming to the market, are you spending a premium to get a better quality fan or just something pretty to look at? If you haven't seen part one of the series, I'll link it right up there. It goes through testing four very different sets of addressable RGB fans against each other in an air cooling scenario with a Ryzen 5 2600 and an RX 580 graphics card. I don't want to spoil anything for you, but the results were, well, varied but air cooling is only half of the equation. What about water-cooled systems? Today's test is happening on my Threadripper 1900X workstation. It's sporting a 4.1 gigahertz overclock at 1.425 volts, 32 gigabytes of Dominator Platinum 3066, and an EVGA GTX 1080 for the win. But most importantly, I have a custom water loop on the CPU using a Swiftec Apogee water block, AlphaCool 360 millimeter cross-flow radiator, and an XSPC Photon 170 reservoir with a D5 pump. The setup this time around is, well, the same as last time. We have four sets of addressable RGB fans and a single set of budget no frills fans to act as our control. If an RGB fan outperforms the control set, it scores higher. Scores will be awarded based on performance, installation, looks, customization, and overall value. Results will be tabulated to give an overall score at the end of the video. So shall we get started? The competitors are the same this time around as well. For a control, we're using Arctic's F12 120mm fans. These are an excellent set of budget fans, as six of them cost me only $25 on Amazon. Speaking of Amazon, this next set I refer to as the Amazon Specials, as they're available under a number of different brand names on Amazon. A set of six fans, four RGB strips, plus two controllers ran me $74. Our reigning champion, the XSPC RGB series fans, make their triumphant return, hoping to see a second straight victory in a shootout. These were by far the best performing fans on an air-cooled system, but how were they fair on a radiator? And is installation as simple as I gave them props for in the last test? Hashtag spoiler alert. Inwin and its Aurora fans and LED strips did moderately well last time, matching the control for cooling performance. But poor lighting effects and customization actually kept these from a higher placed finish. And finally, the most interesting kit of the bunch has to go to the Corsair L120 fans and the Node Pro controller. Lighting effects were fantastic last time around, but this is by far the most expensive kit here, and subpar airflow kept these from being a sure thing. Testing methodology is identical to last time, just with completely different hardware. Same fans though. Once I had an idle temperature, and Windows stopped running updates in the background to screw with that, I ran Unigen Heaven to simulate gaming until all temperatures equalized, then captured the average temperature over the next three minutes. For CPU stress test, I ran Ida64 again until all temperatures equalized. So are there any upsets this time around, or are we just rehashing the last video? Before the results, there were a few differences from the first test that did affect the final scores in this test. First, I had a bit more difficulty getting the XSPC LEDs to work properly, and it was actually due to a cabling issue. This isn't a direct knock on XSPC, but an inherent problem with the standard 3-pin digital RGB header design. The fit is a bit loose, and there's no lock to keep the header secure. When using the XSPC RGB hub, the angle of some of the cables was causing the fans to disconnect. I wound up needing to put a dab of hot glue on each cable to keep them in place for this test. It would probably work long term, but it's certainly not an ideal solution. And this is actually a place where a set of custom headers would actually be a benefit and not a hindrance. Inside of my Inwin 303, the XSPC fans were not nearly as bright and didn't pop nearly as much as they did inside the Corsair Crystal 280X. The effect was still there, but behind the smoke glass panel, everything was a bit more subdued. And as opposed to last time, where the light rings on both sides of the fans helped tie the look together, on the bottom of this case, they actually appeared a bit out of place. So XSPC in my book lost a point in both looks and installation here. Meanwhile, Corsair's LEDs were able to cut through that smoked glass panel, and combined with the RGB Pro expansion kit they sent out, kept their looks head and shoulders above every other kit tested. One point was added to the looks category, giving Corsair a perfect 10 out of 10 in both looks and customization. The addition of that LED strip pack, however, added $40 to already the most expensive kit here. All right, I have strung this video along long enough. What about the results? And in last place with a score of, I disqualified these god-awful things because they could not keep my system under 92 degrees Celsius in Ida64. I stopped testing because the temps just kept climbing, whereas the next highest temperature recorded in the same test reached just 79 degrees Celsius on all the other fans. I'm talking, of course, about the Amazon specials. Don't use these on a water-cooled system. I don't recommend using these on an air-cooled system either. 
Maybe they make sense for a very low powered build like a Penny MG or Ryzen APU that you're looking to spice up, as they do only cost $74 if you're looking for that extra bit of RGB flair. But they're terrible fans. Coming in fourth place, Inwin's Aurora fans. The performance was better this time around, actually beating the control fans outright. Unfortunately, the hole from the lack of software options and looks, there were only four LEDs in each fan and they're not even all that bright, was just too much to overcome. They're overall a very good quality fan and actually took top honors in installation thanks to its unique daisy chain cable system. I would definitely recommend the Inwin Aurora kit, just don't expect very vivid lights or software customization options. Third place goes to the Node Pro controller and LL120 fans from Corsair. Although I must say the gap between third and second is far closer this time around. In the air cooling test, there were six points between them. On water, the difference is only 1.4. The LL120 fans still couldn't quite match the Arctic control fans for performance, but still came much closer than the previous tests. Installation of the Node Pro controller. Well, I think my one-year-old makes less of a mess eating spaghetti. There has got to be a better way to get these fans to light up because these cables would have a hard time being hidden away in a lot of cases. It's a recommend for me on these if you have the money, as they are the best looking kit by a long shot and customization is amazingly good through IQ. Just make sure you know how to braid. Second place and we have our first change in the lineup. It's actually the XSPC RGB series fans. While these still look great, and yet again were tops out of all the fans tested for cooling performance, the difficulty with the RGB hub coupled with the much more difficult to see looks knocked these down below the Arctic F12s in terms of overall value. Great fans, great price, and you really wouldn't be sorry if you picked these up for your rig. So if you're keeping score, second through fifth is all four of my RGB kits. So am I saying the Arctic F12s one? I kind of am, because it's really hard to go wrong with a set of inexpensive PWM fans that come in either black or white. Seriously, $25 scored the second best cooling performance on air and third best on water. Now keep in mind, we're not using top flight fans like Noctua's or EK Vardar's to compare these against, but that's exactly what this kind of test was designed to suss out. And if you spend more money for RGB fans, are you getting equal performance to a performance fan? I guess the answer, as usually is in cases like this, is it depends. Honestly, if I were to pick a winner, it would be the XSPC RGB series fans as they were the top performers in both air and liquid cooling tests. And honestly, for $127 for six fans, it's not that bad of a deal considering what premium fans usually run for. It's just the metrics that I laid out, they came in second. Corsair's LL120s, while being the flashiest and most impressive lighting kit on the block, seriously, these feel like the most well-established ecosystem here. At $250 for six fans, four LED strips, and the controllers required to drive them, I do feel a bit underwhelmed that they lost again in cooling performance to the Arctic fans. I'm hoping that's something they can address in the future and improve on, because the looks you can achieve with these are simply second to none. And honestly, if looks are what you're going for, these didn't perform too terribly either. The Inwin Auroras? Well, they did perform okay as they performed on par with the Arctics, but the Arctics are $25 and the Inwins cost considerably more than that. I have a really hard time justifying the equal performance to the subpar lighting in this category. And the Amazon specials? I can't wait to rip these out of my system. Make sure to let me know down in the comments, are you looking at addressable RGB lighting for your next build and would you pay a premium for them? Let me know down in the comments and make sure to like this video and subscribe on the way down there. If you're interested in picking up any of these fan kits and want to support the channel at the same time, make sure to follow the Amazon affiliate links down in the video description. And as always, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video, possibly from a new office. Cheers, guys. That is a different kind of sour. <laughs> I don't know how to place that. Way smoother finish than I'm I'm accustomed to in a in a in a sour. There, there's no tartness to it. It actually ends very smooth and very sweet. Tart, 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 tart. Gone. <laughs>